Hey everybody, Mark here at Whiskey Whistle on YouTube sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winter Peg, Winnipeg, the center of North America, bringing you a little live stream talking all about, well, partially all about Hunter Lang independent bottles. And well, I know it's a little kitschy, but I'm going to play my music anyway because, uh, you know, it's kind of, uh, it kind of gets me in the mood. Hopefully you can hear that. <laughs> Maybe that's, oops, haha, that's going to be too loud. Yeah, that's too loud. Okay, there we go. Hopefully you can hear that a little bit. All right, so I'm going to be trying all these different Hunter Lang independent bottles, and I'm choosing this uh, live platform rather than doing straight-up reviews because I think it's a little bit more suitable for, for this type of uh, uh, just one-off type of whiskeys. So that's what I'm going to do. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about Hunter Lang. So Hunter Lang is uh, uh, a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a partition. It's a split off of a family, the, the Lang family of independent bottlers. We have Douglas Lang and we have Hunter Lang and they split off a number of years ago. And anyway, so this is Hunter Lang's bottlings. And they also have a distillery on uh, the Isle of, is it Isla? <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, all of these new distilleries really make it tough to remember what they are until you try them, until you can actually enjoy and see what they're all about. Uh, I think it's at Ardenaho. Ardenaho Distillery. Let's see. Maybe. Oh yeah. Anyway, well. Anyway, thanks for uh, for checking this out today, and uh, we'll get right started. So the first whiskey we're going to be trying is a very interesting old malt cask. Can you see that? Yeah, it's right there. That is this bottle right here, old malt cask. It's called Possession Day. Uh, this is a actually a, a very special bottling that uh, is available here in Winnipeg. And uh, this was a single cask, private cask that was purchased by a, uh, a friend of mine. His name is Gino. Hi, Gino. And uh, so this was one that he brought in and shared it with a lot of members in the club, which is great. So that's, uh, that's the bottle. This is a Blair Athol. And this one is, I think it is a, a PX cask. And it's 50% ABV, as all old malt casks are. And this one is 15 years old. Let's get that poured. All right. Here we are. Just a nice little healthy amount. Okay, bottle there that's better all right really fresh bright aroma now this is a is I think it's a Highland isn't it um, yeah Highland region Blair Athol not a distillery that you can typically find on any given Sunday uh, wherever you are um, any day of the week that is, but um, hard to find Blair Athol as a regular bottling. Um, so oftentimes you do find them, however, in independent bottles. And then you're sitting there wondering, you know, what's this like? Because there's only 200 bottles of it and um, that's that's all that, that, that there is. And how do I know if it's any good? Now, of course, there are some... Um, we'll call it uh, some sites like Whiskey Base, where you can find a lot of independent bottlings talked about a little bit, but there, there will usually be only about four or five, at best, uh, five different um, comments or reviews or scores, which, which makes it tough to, uh, to trust in a way. Uh, that's certainly not enough to represent uh, the complete average of all the people who tried that bottle. So anyway, um, so 
still want to solve this question about Ardenho Distillery. Yes, yes. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. Yes. So Ardenho Distillery is owned by Hunter Lang. And um, it is on the Isle of Isla. I think they've just started releasing uh, their whiskey. And uh, we were talking about that uh, uh, earlier tonight. But um, that, that'll be fantastic to have yet another Isla single malt scotch distillery, um, which, you know, it's going to do well. No matter what happens, it's going to do well. All right, so this Possession Day. Now, this is an interesting name, by the way. Um, Gino is a, a fellow realtor, and so that's a really apt choice of names for uh, for his bottle to call it Possession Day so that um, uh, he can give that to, to clients on Possession Day. And then another member of the club, whose name is Tyler, he designed this uh, uh, the label, which is a little bit uh, demonic. So the other meaning of possession, <laughs> which I think is awesome. Uh, all right, now, before I do that, I want to just check, make sure that I am actually uh, live and not talking to myself. Where are we? Let's see. Yeah, all right. So we're live. Hopefully the sound is good. Please tell me if the sound is okay. I guess I can check that out myself. Let's see. Good, I can hear myself, perfect. Okay, now once this is settled in the glass, um, you develop a little bit of uh, fresh raspberry, Lots of fresh raspberry, a little bit of um, like glacé, almost like sugar, sugar uh, icing, sugar icing syrupy type of a sweet, sweet confection kind of scent. So really sweet, fruity, fresh. A little bit of fresh citrus as well. So a little bit of citrus, some of these raspberry scents, a little bit of the sweet confection type of smell. Very bright vanilla, vanilla extract, um, not the pods. All right, on to the, the, the palate. Cheers, guys. Cheers and yells. Hello, Donner Pass. Welcome, nice to see you again. Super sweet and candy-like and delicious on the palate. This is a really nice dessert whiskey. Mm. So Blair Athol, not a distillery that you uh, you come across every day again. Towards the end of the palate, I'm getting a little bit of butter, creams. Um, so something has shifted. That icing has become like a buttercream, which gives it a bit of waxiness. It gives it a little bit of mouth coating feeling. Hmm. And it's 50%, but it drinks like 46 very, very soft, very friendly. Let's add just a couple of drops of water. Two, three, four, four drops of water. <clears throat> All right, now, uh, should I share a photo of this one? I think I will. Okay, let's see here. Should be right about there. Back, back, back in time. Okay, here we go. All right. <clears throat>
and send it to myself. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, it looks like Donner Pass Whiskey, he's off work in three hours, and then it's whiskey time. Where are you? I always forget where you are. Obviously, you're not in North America. Otherwise, how on earth could you still be working at this uh, this time of night? Okay. Okay, sending myself these whiskey photos so I can share them. That's how poorly prepared I was. I will share something uh, with you, however. Let's see. Cancel. So you, you, you wow, that's crazy. So you are in, uh, in, in North America. You're in California. So that means... I guess, what is it? It's 11 p.m.? I guess you're on uh, Pacific. All right, so we added water. That, uh, that buttercream icing is coming into the nose now. And the fruit, that raspberry fresh red fruit, bright red fruit has developed something more like a, like a cooked note. So raspberry tart, a little bit of sweet strawberry. Hmm. And a little bit drier on the palate with water. I think I like the palate better neat. Well, so let's get started with a whiskey whistle, whiskey score for old malt cask. Blair Athol, 15 Possession Day, a uh, Gino Cipriano private cask that was brought into Canada. And, uh, well, what's that going to be, folks? It's going to be 87 out of 100. You heard it. 87 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for this Possession Day. Old malt cask, Blair Athol, 15-year-old. Very interesting. And sorry about the excessive whirring. My... Uh, my computer runs quite noisily, and that's really annoying because I spent quite a lot of money on this this gaming device that, uh, you know, just wish it were quieter. I guess what I can do is get the mic closer to my mouth, and then that way maybe that'll be a little bit quieter overall. Hopefully that's better. Okay, I guess I could use a sock too. See, now it's getting quiet. What's going on in there? What's going on in there? Okay, so let's get on to the next bottle. Um, well, before that, I do want to share a little bit about old malt cask. Uh, so just bear with me a second. Old malt cask, where are you? You should be... Go this way. Documents and downloaded. Okay, so here it is. And then back to you. All right. All right, so this is Old Malt Cask from Hunter Lang. This is their basic bottle that they show on the website just to talk about what Old Malt Cask is. And it's their oldest label, I believe, for Hunter Lang. I think it's 15 or some odd years. And um, apparently it's one of the best selling of the, the independent bottlings um, out of all of them, because you know there's, there's, there's like dozens and dozens of independent bottlers. So this old malt cask does quite well. They're bottled at 50% ABV, they're unshow filtered, natural in color. And what they say is that they wanna showcase uh, their, the best casks that display all of the, the, the goodness of that distillery uh, with old malt cask 
And I think it's great that it's 50% ABV, 4% more than your typical 46ers, 10% more than the bare minimum. So uh, very, very nice stuff. And uh, the old malt cask that I am enjoying right now, this one is an exceptional, exceptional, uh, what can I say, iteration of old malt cask. Really, really excellent, really delicious. All right, so the next bottle we'll check out is, uh, uh, we're gonna jump right up to the, the top end of things, and this is first editions, the first editions from um, Old Malt Cask, and we have, pardon me, from Hunter Lang. We have three of them. Okay, so this is uh, Dalween, however you say that, Dalween 2007. Uh, that's an old bottle that I've had for about a year now, and I sip it very slowly because I like it quite a lot. This one is one of 294 bottles from a sherry butt. This one is bottled at cask strength, non-chill filtered, and not colored. 57.6% ABV. And this was from my first ever Dram Room, together with Lee Hansen of Select Wines. They represent um, Hunter Lang in Canada. Just a little taste. So we're jumping quite a bit up in age. I guess not. No, this is 12 years old, so not so much. But... Uh, a big jump in ABV up to 57.6 and uh, still in the sherry theme here. This will show you the color. All right, so there's the color of this uh, Dal Yuan. So we'll bother with legs in the live stream. Now this is much more, let's say, I don't know, a little bit more big boy pants than uh, uh, than the uh, the Blair Ethel. It's got much more substance. It's sherry, but it's not. It's not. That's not all it's about. It's about a lot more than just sherry. And while I'm uh, while I'm uh, smelling that one. Let's pull up the image for first editions, which I'm guessing is this one. Nope. Okay, come on, photos. There we are. Okay, so here's a stock image of what um, the first editions from Hunter Lang looks like. I really like the packaging and I like the little ribbon that they put on uh, uh, underneath the, um, uh, the cork sealer or whatever that's called, the foil at the top of the bottle. And an interesting little, um, kind of emblem style logo. Um, the label's kind of big, but it tells you everything you want to know about, about the bottle, which is nice. All right, so that's the first editions. Of course, that's not the bottle that I'm having. Again, I'm having this Dow Yuan 2007 Space Side Region, okay? That's what I am currently smelling and tasting. So we have a little bit of roasted chestnuts, including the shell, um, putting them in the oven, roasting those up. A little bit nutty, a little bit, mm, there's like a little waft of peat in there. 
And interestingly, I have two, well, no, that's the only Dell Yuen I have here, but um, we've got lots more peak coming up. This also has a little bit of um, gentle, enjoyable, light, very light, silver. Say it quietly. Hmm. But such a huge, rich mouthfeel and taste. We have red fruit jam, fresh red fruit. We have interesting like oat cookies. Hmm. Really boisterous on the palate. And the finish is long and juicy, a little bit tart. We have a little bit of red Kool-Aid without sugar added. Hmm. And a hint of old school leathery type of notes in there as well. A little bit toned down sweetness, a little bit more balance with the, the nice tartness and juiciness that we have here. We'll add water to that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten drops, eleven drops, less than one milliliter. Okay, now I want to get the next bottle poured. And this one is, um, well, we're jumping way up in age now. This is 1998 and bottled in 2009 for 21 years. Glenbergy 98. This one was um, bottled in a refill hogshead. There we go. Too quiet. Okay. Haven't opened that one for a while. It's been under gas. All right, so that's the uh, the bottle there. Can you focus? Please focus. There we go. I guess it's got to be right in the middle. All right. <clears throat> All right, so Glenn Berge, 1998 from Space Side, 52.1% ABV. This is bottle number 52 of 195, 196 bottles, pardon me, from a refill hog's head. Refill, it's probably third fill. I guess if they're just saying it's refill, they're not identifying it as second or third, or it could be a mix of second, third, and therefore it's just simply called refill. This one has a much lighter hue. Still a nice golden color though, isn't it? And again, this is also Super old school in the way it smells. And the bourbon influence is much, very evident here.
we have lots of uh, um, vanilla caramels. We have some Maria tea biscuits. And a really interesting tropical fruit coming through, which is, what is that one? It's papaya-esque, but not quite like that. Anyway, cheers. Hmm. Now in Canada, This is the, uh, the, the importer for Canada for, um, for Hunter Lang products. And uh, the, the very dapper and elegant gentleman that's made his way all the way out to Winnipeg just for the Winnipeg Whiskey Club and has, uh, has now delivered three, uh, three whiskey tasting events for us. And his name is Lee Hansen. And I'll just share a little picture of him. All right, so there is Mr. Lee Hansen. Hello, sir. Good to see you. Behind a whole bunch of old malt cask and the very delicious Hunter Lang Scarabus Isla single malt scotch whiskey. Okay, so anyway, anyway let's get back into that uh, Glen Burgie 1998. There is lemon pith. And a little bit of um, oil paint, oil, uh, oil paint, paint, pardon me, oil, oil paint, paint, like, uh, I don't know, like yellow ochre. Hmm. Graham crackers, a little bit of marshmallow, lots of vanilla, and a really dry and What's the word I'm looking for? It's almost got a, I don't want to say menthol. It doesn't taste like menthol, but it's got that same feeling of menthol when you breathe in. Hmm. I guess I'll just call it menthol because that's the best description I have for the way that feels in my mouth and my, my nasal passages. Hmm. Now, I think I forgot to give a score to Dal, uh, Dal Yu in 2007. And we'll take one more sip now that it has some water in it. We have baked pumpkin. Strawberry jam. Much more vanilla, lots of toffee. Hmm. Leather. Hmm. It's got a little bit of a fizziness to it which is quite nice. So 12-year-old uh, Dal Yuan, 2007. 
the whiskey whistle whiskey score. That's Glenbergie. There it is. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 88 out of 100. You heard it. 88 out of 100 is the whiskey whistle whiskey score for Dal Yuen, 12 year old, 19, sorry, pardon me, 2007. Okay. Mixing up bottles here. Look at how much of this Glen Burgie that I'm sipping away. Better add a little bit more. Okay. And we'll add some water. Now, what kind of uh, old malt cask or first editions or Hepburn's Choice or, you know, the whole, there's a big, big range of independent bottling, uh, what's the word, brands that, that uh, uh, Hunter Lang is responsible for. And uh, we have uh, Ben Demon Hunter that has joined in and uh, he says that I'm a night owl. And in fact, I am. And, and sadly, I wanted to get this started at um, about 10 p.m. But um, I wanted to make a really nice cover photo for this. That took me about an hour. And when you're doing, when I'm doing creative things like that, trying to get things just right, time just slips away. Anyway, yes, the independent bottler, Hunter Lang. And right now, uh, Ben, I'm trying the first edition's Glenn Berge 1998, which is that one right there. Isla Journey. All right, and we have Malton in Montreal who has stepped in. And he says, you're up late. In fact, I am. It's much later for you. You should talk. Uh, good stuff. I'm really glad to, uh, to find some, uh, some friends that have joined. Yes, first edition, not quite like the comics. Doesn't quite appreciate like those. But these are pretty collectible, I think. And I think if somebody were to have a whole collection of first the first editions from hunter lang and just stuck them in uh in the cellar for 20 years they probably have increase in value at least to a degree as long as people are still interested in whiskey in 20 years okay so now with water did i add water to this you guys are throwing me off my game here yes i did no i didn't did not add water to it yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten drops. Less than one milliliter. And uh, this is probably true for most people in the world that right now they have no responsibility these days other than for cleaning their clothing and making their bed. Don't forget eating. And uh, for people like me who have kids, then looking after the kids is a, a, a big job. Boy, I have left um, a bunch of things up there. Uh, ben says he's got the Glenbergie 10 single malt. Um, the distillery really oh so you're talking about what you're talking about is uh the um valentine's branded glenbergie is that right oh you're talking about the squat is a squat bottle that says distillery release it's got a kind of a crappy label and i think it's cask strength is that the one All right, so anyway, with water, really ramped up biscuit, digestive cookie, vanilla wafer, very cookie-like nose here, lots of vanilla. This is the one that has the most vanilla so far. The first two, though they were sherry, of course there's a bit of vanilla here and there. 
Ben, does that say Ballantines on it somewhere? Hmm. I don't think it does. I think the uh, the the Ballantines are 12, 15, 18. So it probably isn't the Ballantines single malt range. But anyway, that's great that you've got that. And um, Sean Kincaid, I, I hear, hear his name a lot. Uh, he's a pretty neat guy. That's the guy that runs the Park Whiskey Society. Is that right? Hmm. With water, this is like, like rum cake in a glass. And um, now this is really interesting because Swami is really in love with the first edition, um, the first edition whiskeys. And the priest says the prices are superb. They're pretty good, especially for the younger ones. You're getting 12, 11, 12, 13 year old whiskeys for, let's say, cask strength whiskeys for like 130, 140 bucks. Um, the older ones, of course, of course, they're older, um, commensurate with their age. But this is funny. Um, uh, Swami guesses the cask have been passed around like a pack of smokes in prison. Probably shouldn't put that up there. Um, well, refill casks, right? Sure. Uh, probably if Hunter Lang is using a refill cask, it's probably probably been used in the past by Hunter Lang or from a cask they purchased, which might have been already second fill at that point. All right, with water, yeah. Uh, lots of nice cake, rum cake. Bit of cinnamon, big vanilla pods, and wisps of sulfur trailing out at the end of the palate, and the finish is dry. Bit of sweetness, a bit of spice. Hmm. All right, let's get on to the whiskey. What's the whiskey score for Hunter Lang? The first edition is Glenn Berge, and this one is 1998, 21 years, 51.2%, nope, 52.1% ABV. That's the bottle there. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 90 out of 100. You heard it, 90 out of 100 is the whiskey. What's the whiskey score for Glenn Berge, 1998? For the first editions, pretty nice stuff. Okay, now this is really cool. Um, so Swami says that uh, his buddy is uh, the head scaffolder at Lag uh, Lag Distillery. That's awesome. I would certainly like to meet that chap and. Uh, Maybe uh, work my way into the 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 Aaron Isle of Aaron Lacranza Distillers uh, kind of like you know cliquey friendship. All right, need a bit of coffee. Okay, so we're gonna move on to um, a different bottling from from Hunter Lang called Hepburn's Choice. And uh, that's a, a brand that they acquired from a, uh, a different company. And Hepburn's Choice is 46% ABV. And this one is, let's call that Scotch whiskey region focused. They're choosing the whiskeys to put under the Hepburn's Choice label that really represent the region well. So that's really interesting. These are single casks, 46% ABV, not chill filtered and not colored. And this was a really popular bottle 
uh, a couple weeks ago at Dram Room 4, uh, a little whiskey tasting that I put on. Uh, this was January 13th. So anyway, a nice dark color. This one, what is the cask here? I forget now. Hmm. I'm going, I see, filled from a wine cask. All right, so wine cask. Well, that's unusual, isn't it? But uh, look at the color of that one. I think you can't see that that well. Yeah, you know what, Ben? It's pretty late, so I'm uh, probably not doing the best thing by putting this out so late at night, unannounced. Um, it's not anywhere. I think I put it on, on, on uh, Twitter, and that's about it. But uh, the nice thing is, is that this will end up getting a pile of, of views tomorrow and the next day, and it'll live on. And when people want to learn about... Hunter Lang, then maybe they'll check this video out in the future. Okay, so this is 11 years old. And it's one of 171 bottles. So that looks like it's a barrel. 171 bottles, 70, 700 milliliters, 46%. Um, that's a, it's got to be a barrel. In fact, it might even be half a barrel. Okay, the color. All right, just a better view there. Nice. Okay, so the nose here. Now, if you're sulfur sensitive, you might not like this, but it's just so good. It is so good. I love Craig Ellicke. I've loved it from the first time that uh, that I've tried it. This is also very much a digestive biscuit but the ones that are dipped in milk chocolate and they do a good job picking out a flavor because it really is kind of milk chocolatey. Like, uh, like the cheap Easter eggs, little tiny little eggs you get for Easter. Fresh Concord grapes. Blackberry, blackberry that is overripe and almost, almost dripping. Mmm. And we have Indy, uh, Indy Ingot, Ingo, <laughs> Ingot. I think Ingot is like a, um, uh, like a, a metal, right? The, um, what's the word? The refined, uh, refined metal that's been put into a little, little, uh, like a piece of chocolate, about like yay big. Isn't that an ingot? Anyway, welcome. This is really, really excellent. And, uh, it goes without saying, because this is so nice. Because it's so nice, we have three people ordering a bottle of this because, first of all, the price is great. Um, the regular price on this is $99 or so. So quite a good price for an independent Craig Ellicke. Hmm. But this, this wine cask has done a great job 
of taking this whiskey and giving it some some body, some uh, uh, some excitement. The finish is buttery. It's got a buttery, like uh, buttered toast with jam. The palate is um, like uh, like like munching on a bunch of, of uh, dried fruits, a mixed mixed dried fruits, not just dark, but uh, dark and tropical. A bit of pineapple, apple rings. And uh, in fact, no, I have not opened that yet. It will get opened soon. And I will uh, definitely put out a review of that very soon. In fact, I have that in duplicate. One of those is uh, mine. And the other one is the clubs. One of those will remain sealed for a long time. And that'll probably be the only Springbank 18 I ever buy for myself in my life. And I hope it's good. And if it's not good, um, when I try with my club, if I don't like it, then I'll, I'll just get rid of it because uh, I have no space for whiskey that I don't love in my closet. Hmm. So far, so far, this is the leader. In terms of, especially the maturation and the wood quality, um, this is a really superb Craig Gallicky. One, two, three, four, five. We'll just go with five drops. And I suggest if you're if you're in Canada, you know, or if you're in the states, and there, there's a there's a uh, you, you regularly see Hepburn Choice bottles. You should ask about this one and um, make plans to uh, to get one. All right, I'll let that sit for a minute, and we will pour this guy. So that's another Hepburn's Choice. And this one is from the Isle of Isla. It's a Kulila, nine-year-old. And isn't it refreshing to see ages, age statements under under ten, being being used not only by independent bottlers but also by uh, by official bottlings. We have Lagavulin Eight. That was one of the first ones that came out. Then we have. Ardbeg Wee BC at five years old. Excuse me. Okay, let's get that poured. All right. So I'll pull that up close for you. Hepburn's Choice Kulila. Bottled in 2020. One of, this is a bigger batch. One of 890 bottles filled from a sherry butt. So 890 bottles, nine years old, probably only, um, I don't know, 10% angel share. Uh, and 46% uh, and 700 milliliters. So you do the math. And I guess that's uh, probably the one of the biggest of the sizes that they can use, 600, 650, 699 liters. Pete, absolute Pete. Before I get into that, let's finish up with the um, Craig Gellicky 11. Still super biscuity and uh, milk chocolatey. Hmm. So 
something like stewed fruits now with water added. Great to see you guys here tonight. Thanks for joining. And uh, while we're talking, I want to pull up an image of uh, the new look of Hepburn's Choice. Let's see here. That should be this one. All right, so here's the new look for Hepburn's Choice from Hunter Lang. A, let's call that a uh, V-sheet, very masculine bottle compared to its current sheet. I think the former bottles were all the exact same bottle, whether it was old malt cast or first editions, um, basically identical. But now they're they're starting to take those those bottles and give them a, sp a special bottle shape. So uh, they use I think they use a color code to show you uh, the, uh, the 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 region it's from. So I mentioned these ones are region focused. So space side region for this particular Mortlach, for example, and then for something else, it'll have a different color. Personally, I kind of like I kind of like this canister. Where am I? I kind of like this canister, but uh, um, the bottle is a little bit, you know, it's like like I could make this label. It's not that uh, blingy, and you know, if you want to get your stuff sold in today's market. You got to have at least some kind of bling on it. And Swami, Swami says, yeah, it's a masculine canister for sure. Uh, the coloring, the styling, the uh, some brocade or whatever that's called at the top. And uh, Indy Ingot talks about the Carmore Mortlach, which uh, which I showcased, I guess, the last time I did these uh, independent bottles. And absolutely, that's a good one to get if you can. And a um, question coming from Malta de Montreal. I'll just pull that up here. Question, Winnipeg not uh, during COVID is a wasteland. How is it during COVID? Uh, how have you not gone all Jack Nicholson from The Shining yet? Uh, yeah, it's really, really, really cold. And uh, you know what? We have a, uh, we've got a snow maze just outside the city. In the summer, it's a corn maze. In the winter, it's a snow maze. And it's it's very much like The Shining. And I think, um, I don't know if it's the cold per se. I think I think it's more the, the sunshine. Winnipeg. I mean, I don't know where uh, where you are. I think Montreal is a lower lower uh, latitude than than Winnipeg. So uh, you know, the the sun goes down at four o'clock in December, January, and it comes up at about um, eight thirty, eight fifteen. So the the sunshine, the hours of sunshine, we've got like eight hours of sunshine. And then 16 hours of darkness. Hmm. Hmm. Love that. Love this. Okay. On to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey Score for Hepburn's Choice Craig Gellicky, 11 year old red wine, wine casks. 11 years old, 46% ABV. Uh, bottled in 2019. What's that going to be, folks? It's going to be 91 out of 100. You heard it. 91 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for this very interesting, enjoyable red wine matured Craig Yellicky. Okay. 
All right, so now the last two are peated. We've got, we've got a couple of peats coming up. We have an Isla peat and we have a Speyside peat. And I'll just show that one off right now because you wouldn't think that Glenbergie uh, does peat, but I guess they do peat a couple times a year. So I'll get that poured right now just so that it has time to settle. Okay, here we go. Okay. So this one is one of 276 bottles from a bourbon barrel. That's the, the Glen Burgie. And 58.6% ABV. I'm going to put a little hat on that for now. And it's 20 years old. And the Kulila, this one's nine years old. I talked about that already. 890 bottles from a sherry butt. So let's check that out now. Cheers, guys. Oop. There we go. Classic Isla sherried, sherried Isla nose here. It's fresh. It's like burning pine needles. Big on the lemon. A little bit of something red fruity in there. But those the sherry butt is really just adding a bit of a uh, bit of sweetness and not so much uh, an overt sherried kind of a, a nose or palate. Again, keep keep in mind that's a big big sherry butt. 700 liters, let's say. So um, the the wood contact will be much minimal, much more minimal compared to uh, to just a regular barrel or or a, a hogshead, for example. Yeah, burning pine. A little bit of antiseptic-y, medicinal type of band-aid-y smell. Some eucalyptus. This one has bona fide menthol. Hmm. Very soft palette. Really, really soft. The finish, however, nice and smoky. You've got barbecue seared red, orange, and yellow peppers. Hmm. A little bit of rhubarb pie. Have you had rhubarb pie before? Beautiful finish. Really sweet, smoky, long, supremely long finish. This has the longest finish of all of these so far. And it's the sweetness and the, the subtle, tangy, salty deliciousness that's coming in here. From that uh, that peated, just the pe peated style of this. You guys, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. But anyway, really delicious. Um, especially the finish. And I don't know how you can... Hmm. You know what? That's an interesting point you bring up, um, uh, Swami. It's got the pepperiness for that, actually, uh, for the uh, Montreal smoked meat. But 
I've never experienced a whiskey like this where you have an engaging nose, a meh, meh, meh palate, and then a ooh, ooh type of a finish. Meh. Mm. Mm. Swallow and ooh yeah. Now you you can't you just can't uh, you can't highly rate a, a whiskey if it doesn't have a decent palate. The palate is the the meat of the tasting notes. Now this is good to hear. So Ben, the demon hunter, um, I guess he has some Mennonite, Mennonite roots and uh, that really shifts your, your, your whole diet, doesn't it? Um, and uh, I think, I think rhubarb pie is very much, uh, uh, a prairie thing. It's also very much a European thing. Um, it's 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 served and enjoyed in Denmark, for example. It's called rhabarba. Um, and you have uh, rhubarb pudding. It's called. Uh, let me try. Let me try. Rhabarba. Mm, I can't say it. Rhabarba roll. Uh, it's rhubarb pudding. And if it's mixed with strawberries, it's yodbe rhabarba rol rol. Oh, so hard to say those words. Anyway, that's uh, that's my family's roots is uh, Danish. Anyway, bizarre, bizarre, quiet palate. All right, I do, I mean, I like it. I like it, it's fine, it's fine. The, however, it's too expensive, by the way. Uh, I gotta tell you this. This Kulila is $150, $150. And we have we've got two people that want uh, that bottle. And I, I guess, I guess it's, it's the combination, okay? So if you just focus on the palette, then it's like, no. But if you put it all together, it is a mild buy. Um, I really wish that there was something more on the palette here. The palette is like, it's not even like Lefroy 10, it's like Lefroy Select. And like other 40% Isla releases. Hmm. <sighs> you know what, Swami? You might be right. I probably could do okay if, uh, you know, you got to cram. I think you got to cram for Jeopardy, though. It's too funny. Okay, so the highlight of the night here, and um, I'll preface this by saying that when I got this bottle in, I had I had no idea. I thought Glenbergia. It's like all the other Glenbergia I've had. I've had three or four of them. Um, I have one over here. Can I get it out? Come on, I can't get it out. Oh, Christ's sakes. Okay. This was my second Glenbergie, is this uh, Gordon McPhail cask strength. Sherried and delicious. My first, uh, first Glenbergie was the Ballantine's 15-year-old, which was nice. And I think there's some other uh drams i had at some bars in korea before so 
I'm coming from that. And then I had this one. This this one I had last June. Okay, so that one was from June. So I'm coming from this basis where I assume that Glenn Berge is your typical space side that is unpeated or just very gently peated and uh, fruit forward. And that's, that's what it's all about. So then I get this and I, I open it up and I start pouring it. This was for a whiskey tasting, Dram Room Ford, uh, January 13th. And uh, I'm like, wait a minute. What the? What the? And then I had to have a little sip because I just couldn't believe my, my, my nose. I couldn't believe my nose. I couldn't believe what was going on here in this bottle. And uh, it's peaty. And it's not just lightly peaty. And when I read this, okay, so first of all, 58.6% ABV, uh, 20 years old, bottled in 2020, a nose of gentle smoked pepper and caramel. The palate is rich and full with peat, milk, chocolate, and soft fruits. The finish is long with lingering peat and pepper. One of 276 bottles from a bourbon barrel. And that must have been a first fill because it's pretty dark. That's a very dark color for uh, uh, for bourbon at, at 20 years. So that's got to be first fill. All right, anyway, so that's the prelude here. And uh, my nose is getting a little bit stuffy. All right, cheers, guys. And uh, cheers to all the people, all the awesome people watching this after the fact. Um, what are your favorite, what are your favorite Hunter Lang bottlings, whether it's Hepburn's Choice or Old Malt Cask or whether it is for the first editions or some of the other in their stable, some of the other independent bottling labels. Okay. Now this talks about gentle peat. And it's really overt. It's overt peat. It is as peaty as Isla. It's like 40 ppm. No less than 30. Supremely peaty. Field like a uh, farm field and hay bale. It's got a very volatile nose, so I, I just went in too close and I got my nose, my nostrils singed there from that. All right, well, uh, Ben, thanks for joining. Good night. He says he's off to La La Land, so sweet dreams. We'll see you on Instagram or here or there. So grassy, herbal, peat. Um, I don't get the uh, the caramel they're talking about. I don't get any sweetness on the nose here. Pepper, absolutely. All right, the palate. Cheers, folks. Hmm. Just unexpected peat. It reminds me of Longro, of Ben Riach, um, of um, Old Balantron. It's earthier, and it's also it's also it's a sweeter peat. Like just the peat, not no, it's not sweet, but the peat is sweeter than that of the uh, the Isla malts. And I think I forgot the um, the whiskey score for Kulila 9. So I'll do that right now. 
The Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Kulila, nine Hepburn's Choice. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 84 out of 100. You heard it, 84 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Kulila Hepburn's Choice. If I rate it on the finish, it's a 90. If I rate it on the nose, it's an 88. But the palette is weak and bizarrely soft, hence the score. Anyway. Okay, back into the Glenbergie. All right, now, probably the people that are here with me right now, live and chatting, have never been to Korea. And even if they have, they've probably never been to a Jimjilbang. Uh, Jimjilbang is a, a uh, health destination, health wellness destination that has a variety of... Um, of hot tubs at different different temperatures, and that's important for for well being. And also, including a, a cold, it's got a, they've got a cold tank. All right, so you got all these different types of uh, uh, waters at different temperatures. And then you also have waters that have tinctures, like you know, black tea. So the whole you'll be sitting in you'll be sitting in a big cup of black tea hot black tea or you'll be sitting in a uh, uh, a big cup of uh, eucalyptus or pine needle or lemon etc green tea is really popular and um, anyway so interesting yeah um, back to the, the Kulila really really soft uh, gentle palette but the finish is just gorgeous A really vacant palette. And then the sweet, wonderful, peaty, fruity finish. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so back to my story. So these Korean jinjilbang, they're called. You've got all these different hot tubs and cold tubs, some with green tea in them, some with black tea, lemon, etc. You have uh, dark rooms. You have um, massage tables with, with uh, bona fide uh, masseuses at the ready to work your body over. And I'm talking like just like the, the Kung Fu style. I guess I should, I should say Taekwondo style. And then you have also, you have a variety of wet and dry saunas. You've got dry saunas. Some of them are built out of uh, clay. And it's like a sulfury clay, and you get a real sulfur smell and feeling coming in there. Others have uh, um, stuff like ginseng hanging from the rafters. So you get this really medicinal feeling in that particular um, sauna. Then you've got your, your typical wet sauna that's just really steamy. So anyway, I get a little bit of this uh, sulfury sauna sulfury Korean sauna coming through here. But super delicious palette, really full flavored. We've got um, all the red berries are there, dried fruit, Fresh fruit, fresh red fruit, billows of smoke. Like it's just waft after waft of smoke combined with the sulfur makes it a, this weird juxtaposition of sulfur and peat, which I don't think you really get on Isla, but you get it in places in, in distilleries that, um, that have that are known for their sulfur content.
Hmm. Okay, a little bit of water added. Ten drops. With water, you get more biscuit, more graham cracker, more blonde brownie. A little bit more of the sulfur, but in this case for me, it's a positive thing. But again, if you are, um, if you happen to be Sulfur sensitive, you might not like this. And with water, you get a raw, direct conduit to that peat. It's really, really peaty and um, delicious. The red fruits have kind of fallen away with water. The palette is about the same, a tad drier, and a nice difference between with water and neat. So that's good in my opinion. That's that's nice to see a difference, just from a pure experience, experiential point of view. Hmm. All right, so we're at the uh, one hour, 15 minute mark. And I'll take a little sip of coffee before I get onto the whiskey whistle whiskey score for that, Glenn Berge, 1999. Hmm, bit of water. Now, if you're doing a multi-dram flight like this, do you have a bit of coffee or some chocolate or something or a, a saltine biscuit like Premium Plus before you get on to the next whiskey? What do you do? I'd love to hear from you. Leave that in a comment. Just share it. Um, tell me via Instagram or whatever. super enjoyable really 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 lovely and uh, just goes to show you that the most expensive bottle from dram room four was the most purchased of the night so it's a 220 dollars bottle and people bought more of those than the uh uh than the, the 80 dollars bottle of um $85 bottle of Glen Caddam Reserva Andalusia, however you say it. Okay, on to the Whiskey with Whiskey score for Glen Berge, 1999. Where are we? There we go. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 92 out of 100. You heard it, 92 out of 100 is the Whiskey with Whiskey score for... Glen Berge 1999 is peated. It's different. It is unique and special. Uh, it's great for people who are all about peat, but also it's great for people who are, um, let's say, typically non-peat lovers, but occasionally enjoy dabbling in peat. I think that's a great choice. Hmm. Now, what to do with all these malts here? Should I try making a super blended malt? A, uh, um, what is it? It's a Hunter Lang blended malt. Should I try it? Let's try making a Hunter Lang blended malt. Okay. I think I want to have... 
I want to have. Okay, well, you know, no. first of all, first of all, I've got to combine the Glen Burgies. 1998 Glen Burgie mixed with 1999 Glen Burgie peated plus uh, the other one was a refill hogshead. I'm just going to blend them together and see what happens. Infinity bottle, that's a good choice. Indie Ingot, an infinity bottle would be very good for these, I think. And either I'm too tired or I've had too many drams to alliterate, uh, enunciate my words very well. But I'm trying. Okay. All right, so these two Glen Berge mixed together. The peat has disappeared because I've just smelled it fresh, full peat, and going down to half peat. So I can't even smell it right now. And it's a lot juicier. And it's really toned down the peat overall. It's acting like a delicately peated space side. Hmm. Enjoyable. Okay, let's make the big, huge um, Hunter Lang blend. We've got a wine cask, we have bourbon cask, we've got uh, refill cask, sherry cask. There it is. It's an infinity dram. Well, it's not infinity because I'm not gonna put more in it. It's a blended dram, it's a blended malt. And it's natural in color. It's unchill filtered. It's already got water added. It's probably somewhere around 48% ABV. 48, 49. Oh, one shot. Now, You've just outed yourself. You've got to be. Are you? Are you? Are you from Korea? Because that's a really popular Korean saying. One shot. <laughs> uh, and if so, welcome. Too funny. Oh, my nose is stuffed, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to blow my nose on camera because that would be just ridiculous. All right. No, I cannot. I cannot shoot that. That's that's like um, almost two ounces. And that just would not be good for my night. And I've got to get up in the morning and I've got to make my daughters their, their lunches. So, no. Anyway, the peat is quite dominant here. And also the sherry is dominant, as you would expect. Those are very dominant styles of whiskey. So it just makes sense that they actually dominate this blend. Cheers. Kombe. Hmm. It's a very tasty um, result. I think it needs a little bit more Glen Berge. A little more Glen Berge. And a little bit more Craig Ellicke. There we go.
Let's mix it up a little bit. And we'll have a little taste of coffee. And tomorrow night, by the way, I am going to be conducting another Winnipeg Whiskey Club event. We're doing a whiskey and chocolate pairing. In fact, it's a whiskey, cognac, and chocolate pairing. And I'll tell you what we're having. We're having, first of all, what are we having first? We're having Hibiki Harmony, Suntory Hibiki Harmony, with a milk chocolate and uh, pistachio chocolate. And then secondly, we're having a cognac called Tesseron, Tesseron Lot 76. And uh, we're going to pair that with um, a salted caramel type of a, 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 a bonbon, a chocolate. And then we're having next, we're having, what are we having? Um, Brooklady Beer Barley 2010. And uh, I forget what, what we're pairing that with. And then after that, we're having the Irishman 17 year old single cask. Uh, sherry, sherry cask, single cask, sherry cask, 56%, 17-year-old Irish single malt whiskey. And then the last, the last whiskey of the night is uh, uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, so SMWS 1.215, which is a uh, Glenfarclas, and they've called that Formidable Chocolate. And uh, so we're going to pair that with um, with some other chocolate. I for, again, I forget what it is, but it's going to be a great night. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so the big old sample here, the big old blended malt. The wine cask is really dominant along with the peat, which is exactly what I wanted. Hmm. It's excellent. And uh, probably, no, not 99. It's uh, it's not going to be 99. It's going to be, uh, what's it going to be? If that were a single malt, I would give it probably a 90, 91. Very nice. A little bit peaty. It's got the uh, the meaty complex notes in there. It's got a, a hint of smoke. It's got lots of red fruits. It's got lots of baking spice. It's very well balanced. Hmm. Very nice. Well, um, on to the lead. Did I talk about that already? The whiskey score for Glen Burgie 99. Did I? I can't remember now. Oh, my God. It's too late here. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. 2.30 in the morning. It's time to stop. Um, yeah, I think I did. I think it was 90, 92. Was it, 90, it was 92. That's right. 92. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, this, this has to stop. And I'll just have one final sip here. Now say good night. Mm. Isn't that funny? 91 for the malted, the blended malt. 92 for the straight Glenbergi. And, uh, and then, you know, just varying scores from 84 to 89, 90 or so. Um, so really interesting that the blend, the sum of the parts is uh, the total, pardon me, the total is greater than the sum of the parts. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to shut this down here and hope you enjoyed that. Um, we'll see you for the next one. That'll be probably, it'll be um, Black Adder. Maybe Black Adder will be next for the next um, Indie In-Depth. Black Adder or Single Malts of Scotland. 
And another one that I have is uh, Caden Heads. So once I get enough of those, I'll do a Caden Heads uh, Indie In-Depth. Anyway, it was fun for me. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, folks. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you're notified of future Whiskey Whistles. And if you're enjoying what I'm doing here on Whiskey Whistle, then why not support the channel through Patreon and join the Whiskey Whistle crew. Patreon.com slash Whiskey Whistle. All right. Take care, folks. We'll see you for the next one. And uh, to Indy Ingod, thank you so much for joining all this time. That, uh, that was great. Bye now. And 